Hi there guys, I'm Nikhil from Greedy Tech and in this video, I'll be unboxing and doing a hands-on review of the Moto E7 Plus. So guys, here's the box. Now this phone is going to be priced around 12,000 rupees and it's going to be available online exclusively on Flipkart and Motorola's very own website. It's available in two colors, misty blue and twilight orange with 4GB of RAM and 64GB of storage. We have the blue color with us right now. Now the main highlights for this phone would be its massive 5000 mAh battery and a better 48 megapixel camera and a Snapdragon 460 processor. I know the list is pretty small, but this is supposed to be a budget phone. Now let's come back to the unboxing. On the front we have a big M, that's the Motorola logo. Following that is the phone's name, that's Moto A7 Plus. On the left side we have some information regarding the branding and the cameras that are used. On the right side it is just the Motorola branding. At the bottom, we have some more specifications, IMEA number and so on. On the top, it is completely plain. Finally, on the back side, we have some of the highlighting features. That's mainly the 48 megapixel camera, battery and the storage information. We also get a quick preview of how the phone looks on the front and back, along with the two colors that are available. That's blue and orange. Now let's unbox it. So first we have the phone itself. Let me just put that aside. Next we have some documentation, a SIM card ejector. Next we have a 10 watts power adapter and finally a micro USB charging cable. Now coming back to the phone, there's a sticker on it with the same highlights that we've just talked about. Let me just peel that off. Now this is how the phone looks on the front and this is how it looks on the back. Now let's have a physical overview. On the back this phone has a plastic back panel with a nice 3D curve to it with matte finish with a gradient color. Starting off with lighter blue and ending up with darker blue. At the top we have the camera module with a dual camera setup with a single LED flash that's followed by the circular fingerprint scanner with Moto's branding in it. And below that it's completely plain. Now on the front we get a massive display with a dew drop notch protected by a 2.5D curved glass. Above the display we have the earpiece and below the display it's completely plain and the chin is quite big. Now for the sides, on the right side it has a dedicated button for Google Assistant followed by the volume buttons and the power button. These buttons are made of plastic, they have a nice clicky feel to them. I wish they were slightly more elevated. At the top it has just the audio jack. On the left side it has a SIM card tray housing a nano SIM slot along with a hybrid SD card slot. So you can either use two nano SIMs or a nano SIM and an SD card, not all three at once. I guess this is gonna be a downside for this phone. Finally at the bottom we have the primary microphone followed by the micro USB charging port and the speaker grill. Now this phone has a thickness of 9.18 mm and weighs 200 grams. Initial impressions, phone doesn't feel all that thick or all that heavy. It has a bit of weight to it but it's still manageable, doesn't feel all that heavy. Now these are the complete specifications of this phone. On the rear, this phone has a dual camera setup, a 48 megapixel primary camera with f1.7 aperture and a 2 megapixel secondary camera for taking portrait shots. For selfies, it has an 8 megapixel camera with f2.2 aperture. On the front, it has a 6.5 inch IPS display with HD plus resolution and 20 to 9 aspect ratio. Under the hood, it sports a Snapdragon 460 processor with a Dino 610 GPU with 4GB of RAM and 64GB of storage. Right out of the box, it will be running Android 10. Finally, powering this device is a 5000 mAh battery and it also comes with a 10 watts power adapter inside the box. So guys, those were the specifications. Now let me turn on the phone and set it up and come back to you in a second. While setting up everything, phone shows us a new way to navigate. Those are the navigation gestures and we can choose to enable them right from the start and that's definitely a great feature, something other brands should follow. So guys, this is how the phone looks once we turn it on and set it up. Here's the notification panel, app draw, and this is the recent apps. Now let's check the about page. So this phone is running Android 10 right out of the box with September 1st security patch, which is really great. As for the storage section, out of that 64 gigabytes of space, we have about 48 gigabytes of space free right out of the box. Now let's check the camera interface. On first use, we do get some instructions. Let me just skip that. Now here's the main interface. Right now we are using the 48 megapixel primary camera, but by default, whenever you take a picture, you get results at 12 megapixel resolution because of pixel binning. Now as for the UI elements, at the top we have toggles for auto and manual mode. So you can change to manual mode directly from the toggles. 
Next we have active photos. It's like sports mode for taking fast moving objects. Next we have timer, flash and HDR which are pretty common on other phones. Now here's the settings page. From here we can change the photo size resolution for the rear camera and the front camera as well. For the rear camera, maximum resolution supported is Full HD at 60fps. There's no 4K on this phone. Now if we scroll a bit, we get to see all these options. And one important thing is gesture selfie, where we can take selfies with a palm gesture. Now back to the camera interface. On the right side we have the video mode and for the toggles, we have a toggle to turn on and turn off the mic and a dedicated toggle for the flash. Now if we go to the left side, we have all the extra modes. Starting off with portrait mode for the rear camera cutout, spot color, night vision, panorama, light filters. And for video modes, we have slow motion and time lapse. In time lapse, there are toggles near the capture button, 4x, 8x and so on. And we also have a toggle for stabilization at the top. There's also a sample shot for time lapse, which I'll be showing you later. Now this is the interface for the front facing camera. Once again, we have the same toggles at the top. On the right side, we have video recording mode. And for the front camera, there's only a toggle to turn on and turn off the mic. On the left side, these are all the extra modes that are available for the front camera. We have portrait mode, spot color, live filters, and we also have time lapse for the front camera, which by the way also looks pretty good. So guys, that was the camera interface. Now these are some sample shots. Now let's test the fingerprint scanner. I've already set it up and here we go. So the fingerprint scanner is pretty fast. It's not as fast as the Oppo and Vivo phones, but it's still pretty fast and pretty usable. We also get a slight haptic feedback and an alert sound every time we unlock the phone. Haptic engine on this phone is pretty soft. Now let's check the face unlock feature. Once again, I've set it up and in good lighting conditions, it is pretty fast. As soon as we press the power button, we can see the lock screen for a brief second and then it unlocks the phone. In low lighting conditions, it struggles a lot, but when you bring your phone close to your face, it takes like a second or two to unlock the phone. In complete darkness, it doesn't work at all. Overall face unlock works, especially in good lighting conditions, but I guess using fingerprint scanner all the time is much better. Now let's test the speaker loudness. So guys, that was the speaker loudness. I'd say it's good enough for ringtones alarms and regular media consumption as well. Now, just like all of the Motorola phones, even this phone has a dedicated Moto app with all their customizations and this is how it looks. Starting off with personalization section, where we can change font and accent colors of UI elements. We can even change the icon shapes. Next, we can change the wallpapers of the home screen and lock screen. Next, we can also change the layout of the phone. Next we have gestures, they're not a lot, just a few, but we have the fast flash, where we can toggle the flash using the double chop gesture. Next we also have the three finger screenshot gesture, which works differently on this phone. On other phones you have to swipe down using three fingers, while on this Motorola phone, just place three fingers on the phone to take a screenshot. Then we'll get a preview on the bottom left corner, and we also get a quick shortcut to take a longer screenshot from there. And besides that, the rest of the gestures are pretty common. Now here's the display section and we also got the peak display feature which allows us to interact with the notifications directly on the lock screen which is kind of a flagship feature for Moto phones. Now besides these additional features, the phone is pretty much empty, it is pure stock Android, there is absolutely no bloatware. By the way guys, this phone also has FM radio just in case if you're wondering. Now before I conclude, these are the benchmark scores. So guys, this is the new Moto E7 Plus. E-Series usually stands for entry-level or budget segment phones with bigger batteries and the same applies even with this phone but with better cameras as well. Overall, I like this phone. 
especially for that pure stock and it experience. So guys, what do you think about this phone? Do let me know by commenting below this video and if you're planning to buy this phone, use the link in the description, it always helps the channel. If you want us to make any specific video, tweet out to us with the hashtag AskGreedyTech on Twitter and we will try to do it as soon as possible. I'm Nikhil from GreedyTech signing off, have a nice day.